In today's video, I'm going to show you how to harvest and store celery, whether you're gonna eat it within a week or so or for longer term storage. And it just smells so green and fresh and vibrant. And this is homegrown celery, so the stalks are gonna be much thinner than what you're used to getting at the store. So if that's why it looks a little bit different than what you're normally used to seeing, but it is mightier and more powerful than supermarket celery as well. So although one of the trickier crops to grow, it really is worth growing. So today I'm gonna to take you along with me as I harvest the celery and then later on to my kitchen and I'll show you how to store it. Welcome to True Freedom Permaculture, where I show you all the tips and tricks you need to have a green thumb, even if you weren't born with one. First, let me show you how I harvest the celery. So this is my celery bed here, and all you really need for this is a sharp knife, and this is something really simple. So you go in and you find uh, the base of the celery stalks where they're growing, and what you wanna do is you wanna come right under where they all kind of connect at the base, and just take your knife and just slice through it right under there, and the whole thing should come up in one clump. And yeah, that's all there is to it. So just, I went ahead and did that for all of the celery that I had growing because we had a frost coming. So I really didn't want the celery to freeze and lose it. So I kind of had to harvest everything at once, but you could harvest as you go too. So I've also seen methods where people just take the outer stalks of the celery and harvest those. So just kind of play around and see what works for you. I also like to look it over and pull off any dead leaves that I see or dead outer stalks, any debris. It's just easier and cleaner to get that off outside and it all makes for a great mulch to go back into the garden bed. Now homegrown celery takes a little bit of cleaning because it's just really easy for dirt to get up around the base and in between the stalks. So what I like to do is actually separate all of the stalks in order to do a really thorough job of getting all that dirt out. Now, if you have a fair amount of celery that you're dealing with, like I did here, it would be best if you have, if you're lucky enough to have these deep sinks like I do, just go ahead and fill up your sink with water and then just let the stalks after you've separated them soak in there. And that will give a chance for all of the dirt and insects or whatever to kind of just fall to the bottom, uh, give it a little swish, and that should take care of most of the dirt actually and most of the cleaning. If you don't have deep sinks like this, just use uh, the largest container that you have or large bowls. Those will work equally well. Depending on how much dirt your celery has, you might have to repeat this process a couple times. Now that I have the clean stalks, I took a sharp pair of scissors and I'm just going along and I'm cutting off the leaves from the clean stalks. And I'm not going to waste that. I'm going to use the leaves in stalks. You could also, I've seen people blend them with salt to make their homemade celery salt. We just don't use a lot of it currently, so that's why I'm not making that but we do make a lot of bone broths, so this will not go to waste. I'm also gonna cut off any of like the stringy ends that are separated too. Those can be kind of tough, and I'm just, as you can see, separating them out, putting them onto one side, and I will bag them up later. I finished with that, so now we're left with my sacrificial offering to the compost bin here in the bowl. You can see there's really not that much going into it considering how much we harvested. Now I also have all of the leaves and like I said, some of the stringy ends. These will all make beautiful stalks or soups later on in the year. And finally, we have our celery stalks, which are ready for either fresh eating or I'll show you what I do with them when I plan on using them later on and I wanna have them around for storage. I drained all the water from the sink, and like I mentioned before, I put all of my stock celery into plastic bags. And I had used these for something else, but I just washed them and thought I'd get another use out of them. So I'm putting them in there, and you can really stuff it as much as you can, and then just go ahead and seal it and stick the bag in your freezer, and it's ready there for you. You can just take some out whenever you need some, and it's really handy. Now 
for the part that you eat. Maybe a lot of you watching are growing your own celery, and if so, that's awesome. But if not, then, you know, most people buy it at the store. So I'm using store-bought celery for this portion of the video. This is the method I use for celery that I plan on eating soon. So I'm taking the stalks of celery and I hold them up to the container I'm going to store them in. So I get a rough idea of how big or small I need to cut them. And today I'm using a quart-sized glass mason jar, but you can use a reusable plastic container. Uh, there are other ways of storing celery stalks, but a lot of them use single-use plastic or packaging, so I tried not to do that, and I think that this works just as well, if not better. So now that I know exactly how big I wanted to cut up my celery stalks, I ended up about having them. I just stuff my mason jar full of the celery stalks, and then what I'm going to do is cover them with fresh water. Celery loves water. It loves it when it's growing. If you think about when you eat it, it's similar to cucumber in that it is full of water. It's very hydrating, so it likes to be stored in water as well. It's gonna last a lot longer than if you don't store it in water. So I'm gonna pour in my fresh water to the top of the jar pretty much so that it covers all of the stalks in there. And then after that, all you do is you put a lid on it, place it in your fridge, and they say it will last anywhere from four to seven days. But in my experience, I have had it in there for even like two weeks and it's still been totally fine. But again, use your best judgment. Freezing celery doesn't get any simpler because you don't have to blanch it first like other vegetables. It'll freeze really nicely just as it is. So you could freeze the whole stalk. You can cut it up into whatever shape or form you want to. It's just that whenever I use celery, it's usually sauteed. So I just thinly slice it because it's usually at the base of a lot of recipes. And in fact, I used it in a chili recipe the other day that called for bell pepper and I didn't have any. So I was like, well, I'll try some celery instead. And it turned out really good. So it's, you know, I use it all the time and it's just nice to have on hand whenever I want some. After I had finished cutting up all of my celery, I just went ahead and put it into a freezer bag. Then I just seal it up and I'm gonna actually freeze this flat so it takes up less room. I hope you learned something useful today and now you know how to make the most of your celery to be able to enjoy it for the maximum time possible because you work so hard to grow it all year long. If any of the videos that you see coming up on the screen interest you, feel free to click on them and I'll meet you over there. I'll see you all again soon.